So, David, did you drink Yoohoo's growing up? From time to time, yeah. From time to time? What's your opinion on them? I mean, they're good. It's pretty much just liquid sugar with a little bit of chocolate flavoring, but I mean, they're, they're good. I mean, yeah, most things are nowadays, but anyways, I was just curious. Uh, we uh, were out of town this weekend, um, went on a trip with uh, uh, with uh, my sister Katie and uh, cousin Emma. Emma hadn't had uh, Yuhu before, and so we got some for her to try, and she was like, it's just watered-down chocolate. But um, I like Yuhus, so I just uh, wanted to say that, so... Anyways, that's all I had for today's podcast. Uh, so join us next week on the Trailcast, and we might talk about some other drinks. So mm-hmm. have a great day, y'all. Yeah. Yep, have a great day. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot. Wait, actually, aren't we supposed to be... There's something else we're supposed to be talking about. Um, And I have a water bottle sitting right here. It's great value, so maybe that's what it is. Okay, great well, value, we'll tell us about that. purified drinking water. Let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see, ingredients: purified water, calcium, chloride. Hold on. What? What? what, what Sodium. Why is there more should, than water should, in this? I was about to say, should, shouldn't water just be water? Yeah, I know. That's true. That's true. And shouldn't this podcast just be the podcast about the title, talking about yuhus? I mean, we shouldn't add more into it, David, than what needs to be added in. That's the lesson uh, for today's story. Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm noticing you're wearing your Lord of the Rings shirt a week too early. I r- thought about that. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, and and you know what you didn't do? You didn't change it. Yeah, I didn't. All <sighs> right, David. So today we're talking about A New Hope. The first Star Wars movie ever made george lucas started with a new hope and uh at the time it was called star wars so let's talk about star wars today and i would love to now known as <clears throat> new hope all right so i would say we could go over um you know the basic plot but we, we did just release a video summary summary of the of a new hope if you haven't seen the movie or yes. haven't seen it in a while go watch that and then you can um jump right back into the podcast here um but i'm assuming most people have seen this movie it's it's a classic movie or at least most people at least mm-hmm. know the plot yeah so i don't really feel like there's much of a need to go over the plot i do want to start or start talking about some of the characters though like we do with mm-hmm. rogue one we, we, we really dive into the characters and i know like their full character arc isn't really complete in this movie because there's two more sequels but still it's kind of the start a good starting point to start off with them so well i feel like we just kind of kind of is kind of is semi-complete ish by the end of this one because in all actuality this was not supposed to be a franchise it was i mean george had some ideas moving forward but like they blow the death star in the end like it's a con- mm. it's a if, Star- if 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 episode 4 was its own movie and nothing else was attached to it it works as a standalone movie um yeah it it was written was to kinda... it was written to be open yeah. to, to have sequels but it wasn't mm. written with a need for sequels yeah yeah so like there are certain character arcs that like you know um one in particular We've talked about this before on the podcast. Uh, I think in our first Star Wars episode, or first Star Wars podcast that we did, that was just uh, Star Wars, where we talked about Star Wars. Um, like you talked about that scum category and kind of how Han Solo's in that category, and he transitions to the hero as the series goes on, where he starts out as you know. I mean, you watch A New Hope. Why is he in the events of A New Hope? Because he needs money. To pay off Jabba, right? So he he takes them to Alderaan, or he does take them to Alderaan, even though Alderaan's not there. He gets roped into the into the rest of the action. Why does he rescue the princess? Because there might be money involved. What does he do when they get to Yavin Four? 
he gets out of there. Now, he does develop a slight bond with Luke, even offering Luke a job, which I never had really paid attention to before. But he was like, hey, you know, you're, you're pretty good in a gunfight. Like, hey, come, come with me and Chewie. We'll, we'll get out of here and you can come with us. So he kind of does that and he ends up coming back in the end, that redemption little bit of arc. But it makes sense why in Empire Strikes Back, jumping ahead, but Empire Strikes Back, at the end of that, he's trying to get out of there again. It makes sense because he still hasn't completely come full circle. Mm. But if you take which, it as a, as a standalone movie, it does still make sense. Which is Han does, in the end, you know, do something genuinely so, or selfless, you know, mm-hmm. saving Luke. Because, you know, Vader would have shot down Luke if uh, Han hadn't intervened. <clears throat> yeah. And, and I will say, you also can kind of see it, like, um, uh, in the movie... Uh, when when they're him and Chewie are leaving, uh, he even makes the li- he says the line, "I know what I'm doing," but the way he says it is like he's trying to convince himself that he's doing what he should do because he knows that he really should stick around and help out, but he's like, you know, still in that conflict of maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I'm gonna leave, but then ultimately he comes back in the end. Hmm. And it feels like a lot of times when Han is trying is trying to convince Chewie of something, it feels like a lot of times he's also trying to convince himself. Like just yeah. some things he said well, he says to Chewie, it just kind of f- comes across that way. Well, I also think like uh, their dynamic is very similar to the dynamic of C three PO and R two D two, where like, you know, the whole conversation is is essentially from your understanding one sided. You know, C-3PO talks to R2, but you don't understand what R2 is saying. Same thing with Han and Chewie. Han talks to Chewie, but Han Han's the only one that knows what Chewie is saying, whereas the rest of us don't. Which, uh... You, you, you Are you about to say heard... you speak Chewbacca? Okay, you've the, probably heard... Wookie? You speak Wookiee? <laughs> you've probably heard this before, but there was apparently, um... When they were filming the original three Star Wars movies the guy in the suit playing Chewbacca would actually deliver his line, like, actually spoke English to Han so Han could have a yeah. more genuine reaction. Yeah. Because, you know, all, all, every time Chewbacca makes a, you know, roars or makes some kind of noise, there mm. actually is some, you know, some line of dialogue supposed to be, you know, being said there. Even though most of the time we don't, we don't mm-hmm. understand what he's saying. There's some, there is a dialogue line. Chewbacca actually does say something. Like in the original script, he actually yeah. says something. You know, we don't, well, we as the audience uh, don't hear that, but you know, we 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 can see Han's reaction mm-hmm. to it. Like you said, it's kind of one sided. But I I just thought that was kind of interesting that you know the, the, when they actually filmed it, the actor who played Chewbacca was actually talking, and they just dubbed over it later. I do wonder, um, and I haven't looked into enough of it to know anything about the character of Chewbacca, but I have seen that in original the original idea for like uh, R2-D2 was that he was going to be talking so they might have lines for that um, I also saw that apparently either in the original release or the original idea for the scene with Greedo, uh, Greedo uh, stopping Han that he also speaks um, I guess what's considered galactic basic but is English um, and that was, as of what we're watching now, dubbed over with an alien dialect. So I do wonder, like, how much of it is, like, you know, not just insert, you know, alien dialect here and then, you know, have a line over here. Like, I wonder how much of it is actually, especially in this one, when they're trying to figure out so much about Star Wars, you know, I wonder how much of it is actually, like, all oh, this is written out and we might fix it later or it might not all be English mm-hmm. later, but it's what it's going to be right now. Mm-hmm. It's also so one one thing kind of kind of other thing more about the movie that I noticed watching it. So I, I watched it on Disney Plus, and you know that's that's the mm-hmm. most current version of A New Hope because you know they've released several editions of A New Hope, but that's the most current version. Mm-hmm. I believe Disney re-released them when they bought Star Wars, but it's kind of interesting because. Just watching it, you know, there's kind of a blend of, you know, 70s miniature special effects and 
2005 CGI, and there might be some modern CGI in there too. I don't know, but it's a kind of an yeah. interesting blend of all, of all these, you know, from from different eras of all these different um, you know, special effects. Mm-hmm. Because like originally, you know, and I was me and Sarah were talking about this last night, and I know you know this, but um, like originally, like they didn't have like CGI was not a thing back then. Like they had to. Like all all that stuff that was originally in the movie was like you know um, like figurines and like sculptures or um, miniatures or whatever of everything. Like they they had to build all this stuff. Like um, the uh, 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 one thing in particular that I'm thinking of is like the um, uh, uh, why am I blanking? The chess table uh, on the Millennium Falcon when they're playing the game, uh, whatever the, the name of the game is called. Um, you might remember what it's called, but, um, anyways, when they're playing that, that you can tell is like stop stop motion because originally it was all stop motion. That whole, you know, scene with, with the, when they zoomed in on the character, the holographic characters or whatever, that was all stop motion because they didn't have the ability to go in with, you know, a computer and make all that stuff. So it had to be, Mm -hmm. you know, practical, practical stuff. I think, you know, most of the, um, you know, uh, whenever you see the space battles or whatever, those had to be practical effects for, like, you know, explosions and stuff like that. They might have been miniatures, but, you know, it all had to be semi... And, like, obviously, I know... I think I watched... Because I watched it on the disc, um, a disc that I, I have, and um, I think it was an older version because um, uh, talking about some of the older effects that they've dubbed over, uh, lightsabers is one of those things that they've fixed up a little bit and i know specifically in the obi-wan vader fight uh in some of the original ones uh there's this there's a part where vader's lightsaber kind of goes white instead of red because of the the way that they were doing using the lightsabers at that time or making the lightsabers and um that that was what happened in in uh this video version i don't know if that's in the disney one because i haven't seen that one in at least a while to really think about it um, but I know, like, the color of the lightsabers was a lot more whitish than, like, just the pure blue-red that is traditionally thought of when you, you know, see them. Well, I mean, even the, um, even the, you know, like, lightsabers and modern effects, it's the, if you look at the blade, like, the center of the blade is white, and the color kind of radiates mm-hmm. out from that. Um, I, I wasn't paying enough attention, enough attention to that during the fight, mm-hmm. didn't know if that was fixed or not in the, in the, the version that's on Disney Plus, but yeah. um, I do know what you're talking about, yeah. yeah. Um, and because I mean, you and me, I mean, obviously, you and me obviously grew up watching this, so like, you know, I I, I have uh, the tapes that Mamaw and Papal used to used to own, but that that was what I used to watch them on, you know, mm-hmm. like VHS tapes. Uh, for anyone who's unaware of what those are just look them up you know that that is one thing is uh looking at the demographic for our podcast obviously i know most of its families they think what it is but it is in that like i think 18 to like 20 21 to 25 range so some people may not know what that is who listen to this but i doubt it i i don't think people like okay you know when 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 we were kids like yes dvds were a thing and Blu-rays were starting to become a thing, but VHS tapes mm-hmm. were still a thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, yeah. a lot of the old movies that I like watching, well, old as in, like, early 2000s movie, say, coming soon on VHS and DVD or whatever. Like, you yep. know, yeah. um, they have that, that line. So it's like, you know, but uh, for, I guess for anyone in the future watching this doesn't know what a VHS tape is, it's a, a fat square <laughs> DVD disc. <laughs> Well, it's film. It's not even um. I know, but yeah, see, yeah, you gotta but... explain it in their terms. <laughs> it's a streaming device that doesn't take Wi-Fi. You stick it this. <laughs> I know, but yeah, I'm 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 over explaining um, something that doesn't need to be explained. But talk, you know, like that had, had the original stuff on it. But go yeah. ahead. We're going back to talking about the, the effects. Original. Um, it's kind of interesting too. Like you also think like the blaster bolts and stuff. They literally, the, the special effects team working on that movie literally had to go in frame by frame and draw the blaster bolts, the laser beams. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That's that's dedication to work. Like that's oh, I, mean, yeah. I think it was only I think it, the movies back then were only 24 frames a second, but still mm-hmm. that's a lot yeah. of work. <laughs> well, also like um looking into it, uh it sounded like this movie was a lot of work in it like just in the making of it cuz it it was a lot of things that had to come together for something that really hadn't been done up until this point like sci-fi yes sci-fi had been done but like it hadn't been done like this you know Mm -hmm. and i mean you know um we talk a lot about like when we were talking a couple weeks ago about um uh indiana jones and like how uh they are using like the deep fakes well uh lucasfilm has been on the cutting like the front forefront of the cutting edge technology because not long after a new hope they started doing stuff Getting people, getting things uh, towards CG and CGI and all that stuff moving forward. Like, um, I don't, I don't think we would be where we're at today with like um, VFX and CGI and all that stuff if it wasn't for Star Wars. Because mm-hmm. I think well, that really was one of the things that started like really coming out and saying, "Hey, we need a need for this," you know. Well, and, and even like the um. If you've watched any of the documentaries or something or whatever about the making of Star Wars, like the mm-hmm. um the miniatures, you know, they used a lot of miniatures in this movie and, and mm-hmm. it really took a lot like I think this year this this movie took years of production. Just from mm-hmm. you know, like all the pre production, you know, building the miniatures you know all that stuff to actually film it because think about that they filmed on site in they, like half this movie is fil- was filmed on site in Africa because mm-hmm. they filmed all the Tatooine stuff they filmed in the Sahara. Which I uh, I saw um, that a uh, funny thing where the um, the government came out while they were filming because they had like the uh, um, uh, what sand crawlers or whatever. I don't know if they had like, you know. I think I think I think some of the sand crawlers they had were actually like not life size, obviously, but like bigger. And so mm-hmm. they had to come out and have like an inspection to be like, make sure this wasn't some, you know, uh, like make sure it was actually what it says it was, as opposed to like being maybe some kind of military operation or whatever. <laughs> They're like, well, what's I going mean, on over here? I mean, like the um, I think most of the time when it's when the sand crawlers are moving, they're miniatures, but like mm-hmm. the. The scene where um, Luke and Obi Wan are, you know, you know, find the destroyed sand crawler, like they're right next to it. That, that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't green that. screen. That wasn't a fake background. That was a real prop. Yeah. So then, yeah, they probably, I mean, they at least had half a side. Yeah, like it was, it was. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um. Ah, uh, there's something I was gonna say though. Um. What was it, David? What was I going to say? You're supposed to know these things. I don't know. Probably something stupid. Ah. Haha. That's what it was. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I guarantee you're stupid, but... Um, okay, this whole podcast but no, uh, is stupid. Like, I, like every episode I figured done. it out. And you know what? It's not mm-hmm. stupid, David. Get wrecked. It's not stupid for once. Actually, what I was going to say was... um, So, like... I would say that this, like this, this movie was made in 1977, released in 1977. So it's a 70s movie. Mm-hmm. It does not, and I mean George, in the process of making this, it's like he didn't want to make, he wanted to make it where it could kind of transcend time. And I think he did. Like obviously, you and me watched versions that had been touched up in you know the late 80s and in the early 2000s. And then probably since then some too. But even aside from that, it doesn't look like a seventies movie. And honestly, like growing up, um I, I I don't necessarily know why, but I remember watching this movie the most, um, out of any of the original trilogy ones. Or even even the prequels, because the prequels were out when I was the the, the <laughs> Revenge of the Sith came out in 2005. I was only, what, three, four years old. So, 
uh, all of six Star Wars movies have been out my whole life. But I, wa- I know I watched this one. I have m- most memories of Star Wars growing up, besides like Clone Wars, is A New Hope. And, you know, a lot of times kids like to see things that are visually pleasing. But I think this is this has always been like this movie just it stands the test of time, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's that's something like uh Okay, so I f- I found this now this is Wikipedia, so take this with a grain of salt, but uh it said Lucas had the idea for the space fantasy film in 1971 so it took six years of production to actually get this movie to be released originally i've I've heard as i've heard as early as 73 but um that's not like i don't know that for a fact so well okay okay so he Uh, said he came up with the idea in 71 yeah he's the idea in 71 so he they may have started actually started production in 73 but that's still four years Uh, of production that's that's like mm-hmm. movies now that, that you know that movies now are like a year or less. Well, speaking of production and all of that, um uh I did look up some stuff about the movie and um it act, it, it was besides the on-set struggles that they had with actually trying to get the movie made as par- far as like you know stuff with it, the sets and all that stuff. Uh, George had a hard time getting the movie, like, picked up by someone. Um, let's see, it says here, uh, that after, uh, and I don't know this for a fact, I've never actually seen the movie, but here it's saying that, um, after George directed American Graffiti, which it's saying came out in, uh, 1973, uh, uh, United Artists... The film studio, United Artists, um, asked Lucas if he had any other ideas, and he pitched them Star Wars, and they turned him down. Um, so he went to uh, Disney, Universal, and let's see, I think that was all that they said here, before deciding to go to um, Fox, and they picked it up. So he got turned down by a couple people. Disney could have had Star Wars a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, but... uh you know, I think it's like one of those things where, uh, you know, we were talking about this last week with uh, Fiend and Ferb and how it w- it took a while before Fiend and Ferb was able to get like picked up and how long they had to pitch to get Fiend and Ferb, you know, on something. And it's one of those things where like Star Wars wasn't that out of right field because I think there had been some sci fi before then, but. Star Wars was like kind of a risk, you know, in making mm-hmm. it. Well, and like, and like you said, Star Star Wars has kind of always been, like you said, like kind of pushing forward into like mm-hmm. you know the special effects, like you like the prequels, like like uh, the Phantom Menace. Was one of the first movies where CGI was used to that extent. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. uh, the, well, that was one. In, that was the reason there, that. Go ahead. You know, there, there were people in production who weren't even sure if it was possible, and I'm sure that happened with uh, these movies too. Mm-hmm. With your, well, I mean, uh, from from what I've heard, like, like Lucas, as much as he loved making and you know probably has a bit of attachment to the um original trilogy he felt limited by what he could do with the effects at the time which is why he made the prequels and he felt like the technology was there in you know early 2000s when they started making them late 90s early 2000s and um felt like the technology was there for him to start making it how he wanted to you know make star wars So, visually, I believe that the prequels are some of the closest to what Lucas actually wanted to see. Now, the acting, you know, I don't... It is what it is. But... Mm. Anyway. 
Oh, right, so we, what we I was going to say, though. Never mind, I already said it. I forgot. <laughs> okay, then. But, uh... Unless you have any more... Oh, I do want to I do wanna lay this... Well, I do want to lay this uh, uh, fun fact on you. Um, did you know that when, in uh, 1977, when A New Hope came out, that it was the highest grossing Star Wars film to date? <laughs> Drop that little bit of knowledge on your friends next time. Uh, I will anyway. say though, um, when it when it came out, it was a box office smash. Like it, it was a hit. I don't know if it was, um, uh, like, you know, where it came on the top charts. But when we were talking about the Indiana Jones, I think I remember this being like, essentially the movie of the year when it was released, um, and. Um, so I think this, they're talking about how, like, the, you know, the biggest movies in, to date, uh, when, like, Raiders of the Lost Ark came out, were, uh, three movies that were from, like, Lucasfilm, and then I think Steven Spielberg was, uh, mm -hmm. I think his, um, third, uh, something counters with the third kind or whatever was, was a big one, too. I would like yeah. to look up the actual... I want to look up the actual thing for it, but uh, I might need to do some research and then get back to you on that. We, we, I but, think uh, we talked about that in the um, Indiana Jones podcast. We talked about Indiana Jones. Um, but anyway, unless you have any more talk about with uh, the produ actual production of A New Hope, I did want to talk about the characters, too. One more thing. One more thing. Okay. Um. So... I was doing some research earlier today, and um, so apparently this came out around Memorial Day re weekend, mm -hmm. um, which was not a normal thing. Uh, most of the time, movies came out during um, breaks, like basically when kids were out of school. Uh, but Lucas specifically wanted it to come out during the school year so that kids could talk about it at school. Makes sense. And there are also, there are also some things with the movie that like, um, like starting out could have come across as a little cheesy, but George specifically made it you know less cheesy so that it would be cooler for kids to like Star Wars, you know. And then you know they'd go to school, they talk about it. The movie would start getting some you know its own publicity by word of mouth, yada yada yada. And I guess it worked because here we are today. But yeah. Anyways, continue. Which character do you want to talk? I mean, we already did talk about some Han Solo. If you want to maybe circle back around to him, because I feel like there's some yeah, more we'll, stuff we can. Yeah, we, we need to talk more about Han. But uh, let's just start with Luke because he he's the you know main character of this movie. Um. So. What 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 do you think of Luke like in the in the first couple scenes he's in? I think he's a very like sympathetic character. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's a very relatable, relatable character. Um, I had it mentioned to me that like, um, you know, okay, so uh, the the movie the movie is laid out very well. Like, mm -hmm. um, you don't meet Luke until you know what fifteen twenty minutes into the movie. You don't meet him until uh, you need to meet him. You know, like, you follow C-3PO and R2-D2 through the first part of the movie, you know, and it flows right down to Tatooine, and then it flows right to Luke, you know, but you don't meet him beforehand, because you don't need to meet him beforehand. So you meet him there, and some of the first things that, you know, are, are conversations he's a part of, Uncle Owen's telling him, go do his chores, you know, and it's like, that's extremely relatable. You know, we're not over here fighting battles in, uh, in off planets or anything like that. But, uh, you know, we all have chores to do. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of real. It's kind of a very relatable character. And then later on, whenever, um, uh, Ben tells him that he needs to come with him to Alderaan, um, 
you know, he's like, I can't go. And you can tell, like, he's like, I really want to go. But he has responsibilities. You know, it's like sometimes, like, you have to set aside your wants for, you know, your obligations. Because he's still, you know, obviously uh, had an obligation to, to uh, Uncle Owen and Baru to stay around because, you know, he was he was their help. And, uh, you know, he had family there and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I think he's a very relatable character. And I think that's one thing that they kind of hone into uh, throughout the movie. He is your main character. He's your hero. But they build him up to be relatable before they build him up to be the hero. Mm. Yeah, and that's one thing. That's, you know, a lot of people will tell, you will say, like, Luke is kind of comes across as kind of, like, uh, um, kind of whiny when he's first introduced, which... A Until little you watch bit. the prequels. Exactly. A, you know, a little bit, but... You know, he he's still like you said, he's still relatable. You still you still sympathize with him. He's not annoying like Anakin was. Um. Yeah, and and then I feel like Luke does have a, you know, you you do see a much bigger character arc throughout the trilogy, but Luke's character arc in this movie is r- really Luke. So. From the beginning, Luke wanted to do good. That's you know, mm-hmm. Luke does not did not didn't have a moral journey. He was always you know he's always where he's been, but yeah, or at least in this movie, he didn't have a moral journey. But he's you know he 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 is his kind of journey is more to more from you know where he's at. To where he needs to be. Mm-hmm. You know, he, Luke isn't. Is, is, well, because, but th- throughout the war, Luke is an essential piece to the rebellion. Mm-hmm. And, and you know that, yeah. that's so. You know him jo- him joining the, up with the rebellion and helping destroy the Death Star is kind of like his. You know that that's where his journey t- you know took him throughout the movie. That's kind of his development. You know, like he, he, his character doesn't really change much in this movie. Because, like I said, he, he's he's always been good and moral. But you know, that, that's kind of where where his journey is is, you know, to to you know to join the rebellion. I don't really know. Like I said, yeah, I don't really that, know if that's... there's much else to to add to Luke. If you want to add any more, you can. But. Yeah, I was gonna say that's that's about all that I was gonna say um, about his character. Uh, there was that you know, honestly, the only thing that really changed or not changed, but like the thing that was really in his character, the arc or whatever, was him finding his place in the galaxy, which is he needs to be a part of the rebellion because, like you mm-hmm. said, he's the rebellion doesn't the rebellion really doesn't succeed unless he is a part of it because. Um, I don't think the rebellion succeeds without Luke, Han, and Leia a part of it, and Han doesn't get into the rebellion if Luke doesn't come. So, well, and think and think about this too. Like I said, Han doesn't get in, you know, does not join the rebellion without Luke, and without Luke, Leia would have been executed. That's true. I didn't think about that, but yes, she would have. So, yeah. Um. I guess we next we can talk about Leia. So again, she does not really have much character development in this movie because she's pretty for being a main character. She's not really in much of the movie. You know, she's in, she's in the beginning. There's a couple scenes scattered through of you know uh, her being inter- interrogated by the Empire, but it isn't until a little bit after halfway through the movie that. Han and Luke rescue her. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that uh, as far as like a female character goes, um, I don't, I I didn't, you know, obviously watch movie uh, every single movie that came out around that time. But 
Um, she is a very strong, and you know, strong empowered female character in this movie. Like, you know, mm-hmm. yes, On and Luke rescue her, but in a general sense, you know, it's like the saying, like she don't need no man. Like, you know, what does she do as soon as they, she gets out of the cell? She immediately takes charge and tries to, you know deal with the situation that Han and Luke hadn't really thought of, you know? Because mm-hmm. Han's only there because Luke begged him to come in, and Luke is a kid, a farm boy, you know, young mm-hmm. farm boy. Yeah, I mean, obviously him and Luke are, tw- are twi- or him and Leia are twins, so they're the same age, but Leia has been in this fight for a lot longer than Luke has. And, you know, and Luke is just, he's, he's entering into it. That's another thing about Leia, too. Leia... Now, I think it's partially part of her uh, position as being, you know, a princess, but she's a natural leader. Like you said, she immediately, as soon as she gets out of the cell, she immediately takes charge of the situation and actually gets them out of there. And yeah, as we th- see through the other movies, you know, she is a natural leader. Yeah. And that... You know, that, that's kind of her role in, the, in all this. Like, yes, she goes and, and is on the ground with Han and Luke a lot, but she's also one of the leading minds behind the rebellion through most of the war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> that That is very true, though, uh, thinking about it. Like, you know... Uh, that was one thing that I kind of was thinking about uh, for the video that we, as of recording or as of releasing this, came out this past Friday. Um, when I wrote that, I had not recently watched the movie, so I had the basic plot points in my mind. You know, all right, you're on the spaceship, all right. The droids come down to Tatooine, all right. They go to Mos Eisley. Then they go to uh, the Death Star because that's where, uh, all, you know, they go to Alderaan, which is where the Death Star is at. All right, they escape that. They go to Yavin 4, attack the Death Star, end the movie. You made the comment earlier with the production how, like, you know, like, they went to Africa, the Savannah, to, to film the movie and how that was almost half the movie. It was about an hour into the movie before they got off of Tatooine. Mm-hmm. It's like the, the pacing of this movie was, you know... Not bad. Like, it was really good. But, like, points were a lot longer than you would have thought. And, and with that being said, like, Leia, Leia's not in a whole lot of the movie. Luke is in a whole lot of the movie, but neither one of them, as two of the main characters, really have that much of an arc. Even going on to probably one of the next characters, we could talk about Han, but I'm thinking maybe saving him for last, just since he has most growth talking about Ben Kenobi, he doesn't really have... Because, I mean, he's the wise old man in this story. So he doesn't really have an arc either. So it's like, you know, you got two two out of the three, four main characters don't have much of an arc throughout the movie. But it still works really well. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing, too, that I was kind of surprised at when rewatching this movie is that I... Tend, like generally when I think of A New Hope, I think of the storyline, generally I think of like, you know, them getting off Tatooine and the, you know, the Empire blowing up Alderaan and stuff. Generally, I think of that as more towards the beginning of the movie, even though that is mm-hmm. halfway through the movie. Yeah. I honestly but, you know, was like, kind of surprised watch, re-watching it that was the case. And, you know? and I, think it, I think it has to do with a lot of it is... Uh, Maybe not necessarily more happens in the second half, but more impactful things that drive the story happen in the second half. Mm-hmm. That's that's where the bulk of the main story is, because you know the main story is, oh, they find the Death Star, they find out the Death Star is there, they have the Death Star plans, they get them to the Rebel base, and then they blow up the Death Star. That's the main story. Mm-hmm. Most of that story is in the second half of the movie. Yeah. Um, and with with that all being with that being said, um, you know, uh, with with the character of like Ben Kenobi, um, we mentioned this in in talking about uh, Rogue One, how 
uh, in Rogue One, they had to introduce a lot of characters, get you attached to those characters, and then kill them off and make it emotional, which they mm -hmm. did a phenomenal job of doing. I feel like this movie does a similar job in how it gets you attached to these characters. Um, because, like, all right, no one's crying when Ben dies, but you still feel for Luke with Ben dying, even though that happens, you know, mid midway to a little bit past midway through the movie in the first movie that you've ever seen this character in for mm -hmm. people who watch, who watched this when it came out, you know, but you still feel for him because of a lot of the setup that takes place in that first half of the movie. You know, there's a lot of setup. There's a lot of, you know, character, maybe not necessarily a lot of character growth, but a lot of like, you know, more bonding, you know, between the characters that you start to get as, as it goes on, you know, even like, um, you know, the bond between C-3PO, R2, and Luke gets, you know, made pretty quickly, and, and that's pretty strong to where at the end of the movie you're kind of scared for R2 when, when he gets shot. Um, and even though they kind of brush that off, not going to lie. But yeah. anyways. Uh, but, you know, you're like, oh, no, he got shot. You don't want him to get shot. Um, but it's like they're really good at building relationships, and it's not... Obviously, it's not. It wasn't supposed to be, but it's not as like, um, as uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, not tear jerking, but it's not as emotion emotional, I guess, as like Rogue One was. But you can still feel the bond between all the characters. Like, um, you know, this they do it really well, and I don't know if that's mm -hmm. a credit to the writing, to the acting, to the directing. I think it has all three elements in it. But, um, you know, a lot of that first half of the movie really just sets up things that the second half of the movie can just knock down like dominoes, you know. And I think it was, yeah. I mean, it was really well written, yeah. so. Also, one thing I just thought of, too, is, think, think about this, too. You know, George Lucas has said Star Wars is really a tragedy. Mm hmm And you, you, you can even look at it in this movie, like, yes, this is... A, generally like on the surface is a lighthearted movie about you know i mean yes there's some there's some darker undertones but it's generally mm -hmm. a lighthearted movie really for kids but think think about this luke in pretty much in one day lost his adopted parents you know his aunt and uncle which you know Raised him, so you know, pretty much are, were his parents, mm -hmm. and yeah. a mentor figure, Obi Wan. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I know it kind of brushes it off because it's not really that kind of movie, but still, yeah. like, think think about that from Luke's point of view. Like, that's yeah, Star Wars is a tragic, you know, especially like this. Well, one, think about it. Well, think about it from again from Luke's point of view with the fact that like essentially. Even even though like I think I think Luke had known Ben, um, and we're gonna we're gonna strictly go off of what's in A New Hope, not like the Kenobi series or anything like that, but um, or anything from Legends. But Luke had known Ben, but not really well. Like he knew of him, mm -hmm. kind of like that guy down the street that you know he's an older guy, and you know him, talk to him maybe once in a while, but that's mm -hmm. kind of it. Um. Probably the creepy guy that your parents are kind of like, no, 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 no. And then, you know, he's over here like, ooh. And uh, there's a reason they're trying to keep you away from him. But anyways, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, family Guy wasn't, but I am. Have you seen the Family Guy parody? Uh, No, but I know Mr. Herbert plays. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so. <laughs> anyways. Uh, but you know, it's like there's, there's. He's kind of like just a random guy that you, you know, you might know not really well. But essentially, everyone that Luke knows, because he's just met Han and Chewie. But everyone Luke knows is just died. Mm -hmm. You know, he is essentially all alone, which is kind of shown later on when Han leaves, because he started to grow an attachment to Han. Well, now Han's out of there. There's not really much of a relationship between him and Leia, except, 
you know, for the uh, faint love triangle that they're starting to form between Luke, Leia, and Han, which at this point it's not known that they're siblings, so it's okay. Not really, but it's, you know, from a film writing, film, film perspective. Um, but, uh, you know, so it's like, he doesn't really have that much going on relationship-wise with Leia. Han just left, so now he's in a starfighter by himself, possibly going off to his death, and, you know, that for all he knows. He has a friend, briefly, that is introduced, but that wasn't even supposed to be in it, so, you know. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, and that, that... He's alone. Yeah, that and that was kind of a, um... Again, it's kind of just the, you know, from a story perspective, you know, that that's kind of the driving force that keeps Luke on his journey to, you know, to where he, to join mm-hmm. the rebellion. But yeah, um, and I know you mentioned Obi Wan. Now, Obi Wan, as far as character in this movie goes, if you look at Star Wars as a whole. Obi-Wan is already done with his character arc. Yeah. And that and that's why he's kind of a stagnant character. Mm-hmm. You know, the the, the well, most Well, even if you look at this movie, well, even if you look at this movie as a single movie, it's very similar to like looking at Yoda even in in any of the movies, honestly. He is an old he's the old wise character. I mean, he has mm-hmm. obviously some growth in the prequels because of the arrogancy of the Jedi. Um, mm-hmm. But like in, in uh, Empire Strikes Back, he's he takes the place of Ben's character in A New Hope. Mm-hmm. Um, he's supposed to be the old wise mentor, which is what Luke or Ben was supposed to be. So yeah, Ben doesn't really have much besides the, you know, confronting Vader. Like that's, that's really the only like, not not even like character development. Like, that's the only thing that the character needs to be like completely done. Which is, you know, mm-hmm. he confronts Vader and then he dies. You know. Mm-hmm. And then we do, we, you know, we do of course get our first uh, like not glimpse, but like hints set off with Force ghosts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because you know we don't, we don't yeah, see one thing. Ben's force ghost, but you you hear him, you know. Mm-hmm. That that was one thing Sarah asked me. She was like, "Wait, so why does he disappear?" And uh, and she was like, "Because you know Qui Gon, he didn't disappear in uh, in um, Phantom Menace." And I was like, "Well, the reason that Obi Wan and Yoda both disappear is because they've completed their training when it comes to." you know, an afterlife turning into force ghosts, whatever that's supposed to be called. They've completed their training. Um, whereas, like, Qui-Gon, Qui-Gon hadn't completed his training. So he couldn't, he didn't disappear. He couldn't fully transcend into the force. He could only appear in extremely force-sensitive places. Which does make one wonder, how does he appear on Tatooine at the end of uh, Kenobi? <laughs> Because the Force is equivalent to life, and I don't think a desert planet has a whole lot of life. But, anyways. Well, I mean, in the Clone Wars, Yoda went had to go to a very remote... Well... It's it's okay. more of a... He, because, like... He went to a remote is, place, but there was a lot of, like, vegetation and wildlife. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there was still well, life. think about there. it... Yoda hid on Dagobah. Well, why did he hide on Dagobah? Because of the abundant force on Dagobah covered up him. Mm-hmm. So he was basically hiding in the force. So, like, you know, that's that's kind of the, the thing with it is that, you know, even in the Clone Wars episodes, it's a very force-sensitive planet where he finds Qui-Gon in the force ghost flesh. Um, now, I have heard... <laughs> Yes, I know. I didn't think about it until I saw your face. Anyways, um, now, that being said, I guess we can let it slide because Anakin learns how to do it. In Okay, 
I understand the you know I, I don't know if it's necessarily canon or legends, but either way it happened. But apparently Obi Wan reached out to Anakin in the Force, and in a matter of seconds of him dying, Obi Wan showed him how to do it. Which, if that's possible, I really do wonder what one has to do to do this and why it took Qui Gon so long to do it. Um, or maybe it's like it's a basic concept. But Qui Gon was trying to learn, you know, the actual. I don't understand. I don't necessarily know all the ins and outs of becoming a Force ghost, but you know, and it can becoming one really does spit in the face of most Jedi and especially Qui Gon. I feel like okay. In, in now, this is kind of more my head canon, more so than mm-hmm. uh, what actually is in Star Wars. But I feel like to become a Force ghost. You have to be, like, attuned to the Force and the way Qui-Gon was and the way Obi-Wan was when he died, the way Yoda was when he died. And Anakin, in those last moments, you know, when, you know, after he redeems himself and comes back from the light side, he was more attuned to the Force in the same way they were. I don't know if that's actually, if that's accurate, but that's kind of the way I, I thought about it. Because, you know, Qui-Gon was also the first one to do it. He was the one who, you know, kind of ha- well, figured out how the, to do this. The, the Wills came to him, and or he found the Wills or something like that, and they started training him in the... Because he was training with the Wills mm-hmm. to um to learn this and then he got called called away for negotiate or for the war and negotiations and all that stuff that was going on i think he got called away for the mandalorian wars and i think that led pretty closely into the events of um not mandalorian Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then that led pretty closely into the events of um uh, uh phantom menace so um he didn't really have time to finish up this training but like personally i i from what from what research I've done and what I've heard, I don't think I can accept your answer. That does not mean your answer is wrong. That just means I might need to explain differently. But um, like you said, it's it's you know if nothing else, it's your hand cannon, and I'm not going to argue with that. Um, mm-hmm. But like I, I I just don't. I really think here's the thing. What happened with it? They Lucas made a decision. He wanted to have Anakin as a force ghost at the end of the movie and that was it he goes back later and starts to explain more about all the stuff with it because you think about it there are there are plenty of things in Star Wars that do not canonically make sense you can mm-hmm. kind of squeak by with certain things but it's because Star Wars is was not a completed idea until a lot later. So some things that were said weren't you know, they they didn't they didn't fix those continuity errors, you know? So mm-hmm. um I've heard and like I said I don't know if it's specifically canon or if it's just legends. I've heard that apparently Ben reached out to uh, Anakin when he was dying, showed him how to transform and I don't know if maybe it's because Anakin was, like you said, so attuned to the Force, even just because he was Force sensitive to such a high degree, he could learn it quicker. But, um, anyways, so, but that that basically was, you know, why he, uh, Ben Kenobi disappeared, Yoda disappears later on, um, and why every other Jedi just gets set on fire. But then you also have to have to think too. There were a lot of in uh, the Rise of Skywalker, there were a lot of voices of Jedi that shouldn't have been Force Ghosts, but we're not going to talk about that yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's not get into that yet. But we should just we just shouldn't talk about that at all. <laughs> I don't I don't know if a rewatch is really going to help me like it better. <laughs> I honestly think a rewatch is going to make me criticize it so much more. <laughs> mm. Yeah, probably. Anyways. But, uh, all right. It's, yeah, so we're, we're, talking, we about, back to we're Han. talking about talking about a new hope right now. Yeah, uh, Han, because mm-hmm. because really, Chewie, C three PO, and R two D two don't really have any character development at all. Like, mm. 
They're, they're not yeah. just stagnant characters. They're just there. <laughs> well, a lot of C-3PO and R2-D2 are there. I mean, okay, so R2-D2 is kind of like the driving force for everything because he has the Death Star plans. C-3PO is a lot, a lot of there for exposition. Um, and comic relief. And comic relief, you know, yeah. And, um, uh, like, Chewie, though, I, I you know, you kind of think about it. I burped. Excuse me. But you think about it, like, Chewie, Chewie is kind of just there. And, like, that's even from the beginning. Like, um, when they go to the cantina, Ben is talking to Chewbacca, but, like, they don't introduce him. He's not, he's just there. And, like, mm-hmm. Ben's talking to him, and then he turns around, and he starts talking to Luke, and they go about their business, and Chewbacca's just there. And it's like, they don't really focus on it. And then you come back around, and you're like, oh, this this person over here was this. I mean, like, they had been shooting around the, the cantina, showing all these different characters, and they, you know, just happened at one that Ben's talking to. So you're like, maybe, it's, maybe it is, maybe it is an important character. It is, but... But yeah, like you said, he's just kind of he's kind of a background character. He's kind of there. He, he, he is the, the sidekick. Muscle. Yeah, we love him, but he's he, the he he's it's kind of like Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's the muscle. He's mm-hmm. there. Like the char- characters do talk to him, but obviously he doesn't add exposition. Mm-hmm. He's just kind of there. But um, I mean, yeah. But yeah, I do want to talk about Han because he has the most actual like character development in the mm-hmm. in the movie, which is kind of interesting because you know he he isn't introduced until about a third of the way into the movie. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's a good ways in. But yeah, well, like I said, I maybe it's just because there's so much more impactful stuff that happens in the second half of the movie. I forgot how long it was from the droids crash landing on Tatooine to them escaping on the Millennium Falcon. Mm-hmm. That is a yeah. large chunk of the movie. But yeah, I Han, like we said before, Han has some of the... Throughout the entire Star Wars series, Han probably has the best example of a character arc. Because mm-hmm. you know, in the beginning... He's in it strictly for himself. He's in it for money. Mm-hmm. He's in it for himself. And we see, you know, we see here that he's also in debt to Jabba the Hutt. Mm-hmm. And now, so, you know, I did kinda... find it interesting. I did find it interesting um, with that. So the reason that he's in debt to Jabba is because he smuggles spice for Jabba, and he got. Um, boarded or something so they had to release all the spice which means that they lost a huge load of a mm-hmm. uh, huge shipment for Jabba which cost Jabba a lot of money so that's why they're in debt to him now I never really picked up I never really pay attention to that much you know yada 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 that's the reason he's in debt to Jabba and it's kind of a thing where like you see just how Han is like he's just in it for the money he's just in it for himself he's just in it for his best interest which kind of puts in your mind well, what happens if worse comes to worse with Luke and Ben? Is he going to dump them somewhere too, or is he just going to, you know... Obviously, he doesn't, but, you know, I do wonder if that was um, somewhat of a uh, storytelling thing to be like, hmm, can we trust this character? Like, we like him. Like, look at him. He's Harrison Ford. Of course we like him. But, you know, can we trust Mm -hmm. him? And that's one thing that, like, you know, Han, yeah, you, you start off, you don't even know if you can trust him. Because, like, you know, like I said, he's introduced a third of the way through the movie, you know. He could be, you know, he could betray them almost instantly. I mean, I know, obviously, if you've seen Star Wars, you know he doesn't. But if you're if you're watching the movie for, for, for the first time and have no knowledge of the movies. If you're watching this you don't back know. in 1977, you don't know. You don't know who this person is, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you don't know yep. who this sexy man is. Well, well you might is... know who he is, but... <laughs> why, why is that becoming a running joke? What? <laughs> it's okay, David. I don't have any problem with anything. 
<laughs> Why is sexy Harrison Ford becoming a running joke for us? <laughs> because he just is. I mean, let's be honest. And young Harrison Ford's even better. I'm not gonna lie. Moving on. Um. <laughs> Anyways. Am I making you but uncomfortable, yeah. David? <laughs> but you yeah, need to be um, more comfortable with things like this, like me. But yeah, like I said, Harrison Ford, like, or Harrison Ford, Han, <laughs> isn't, um, he really isn't a good person starting out. No. Like, he, like I said, he's strictly in it for himself and for the money. And like I said, well, well, the, the first and only selfless thing we see him do in this this movie is come back and save Luke. So, the the constant debate, or the constant thing, I don't know if it's a debate anymore, I don't really know, I don't really care. Han shot first. Talk to me about that, because I have a thought, or thoughts, but, you know. Do you want me to, you want me to just sum up the basic debate in, in case anyone hasn't yeah. seen it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, I think the way it was in the original cut of the movie... When Han and Greedo were talking, Greedo was you know about to pull his gun, and Han shot him. Well, Greedo already had his gun on him. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. But yeah, Han, or Greedo was about to shoot him. Han shot him. Later on, in one of the special release special editions of the movie, they changed it so Greedo actually shot first and missed, and Han shot him. Mm-hmm. And so that's where the debate comes in, you know, Han shot first. And so, okay, so the main thing of the, you know, Han shot first argument is like, you know, well, obviously that's the way it was in the beginning. And I feel like, a, I think a lot of people's argument is that, you know, what, you know, Han didn't, even then, didn't kill him in cold blood because he knew Greedo was going to shoot him anyway. Well, I mean, Greedo came out there with a gun on him. Mm -hmm. So, if nothing yeah. else, it was self-defense. But even if it wasn't self-defense, I don't feel like it's out of the characteristic of no. Khan's character at that time as you know him. Which makes it, like, I, I understand maybe why they wanted to, because of the later movies, Khan becomes the hero, and you don't want your hero seen as this. But all heroes have a, well, not all heroes, but heroes have a dark past a lot of time. Khan shot first. That's a done deal. That's a fact. It's what Han would do. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, we're talking... He has a character arc, but, like, what's he doing at this point in time in the movie? He is doing what's in the best interest for him. Staying alive is typically in the best interest of yourself, so he does what he has to do to stay alive. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, Han... Like, I I've... I'm I'm not gonna sit here and argue with someone about the Han sh Han shot first argument, but generally I think yeah, the way it was in the original movie should have been how it is, because mm -hmm. like you, like you said, because well, like, like you said like yes, Han was at that point where yeah he's scum he's you know he's not mm -hmm. a good person. So yeah, I mean yes, it was still it was still self defense because Greedo would have sh would mm -hmm. have shot him, but still I don't think Han, I don't think Han where he was at that point was above killing someone in cold blood. Well, also let's talk about this. So yes, Greedo has a gun on him throughout this whole entire sequence, right? So he's already the aggressor in the situation, but whether he shot first or not. Han's pulling the gun out of his holster. You don't pull a gun out of your holster just to pick your nose with it. Usually you're going to shoot someone with it or shump something with it. So, mm -hmm. you know, if two people are sitting there with guns pointing at each other, does it really matter who shoots first? No, I'm pretty sure it just matters who walks away alive. <laughs> you know? So it's like... That's, mm -hmm. that's essentially the situation we're walking into here. So it's like... Yeah, I, I mean, I would shoot first too. Mm. I would try at least. I probably, I probably would fail and die miserably. But 
Hmm. And I think I think that's another one of the um, arguments from the from the a lot of people who you know come from the standpoint of Han shot first because you know Han is supposed to be in addition to being you know the you know one of the best pilots in the in the galaxy he's supposed to also be one of the best shots and like quickest draws in the galaxy. So, you know, it's, it's... Yeah, he was doing it pretty slowly, so I'm not entirely sure. Well, okay, he was I under, know, like, I he had, know, he had this... He was still under the table. See, David, this is me with my hands, and my hand is mocking you. Really, it looks like it's mocking you. <laughs> That's not my fault. <laughs> You know, generally when you do that, you're supposed to be matching my voice, not yours. <laughs> well, you know what? I got some things to work on. <laughs> it's going to make no sense to anyone who listens to it on podcasts. No, it's not. <laughs> Easter eggs. Easter eggs for anyone who cares to watch it on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Now, um, if we're done talking about Han, because we did talk about Han earlier too, but and mm. I, we need, we'll talk about Han throughout most of the original trilogy, I'm sure. And I do want to talk about so I do want to talk about the actual movie Solo later on too, and we, we'll mm-hmm. dive more into Han then too. But uh, one one person that we didn't really get to dive into much when we talked about Rogue One. Is Tarkin? We we must have mm. talked about the CG, you know, CGI in Rogue One with Tarkin. We didn't really talk yeah. much about the character development. I mean, we did we did mention his arrogance and stuff, and you definitely see more of that in this movie because, mm-hmm. like, you know, even even there, um, right before they blow up the Death Star, you know, um, one of his officers comes up to him and says, you know, uh, sir, we've analyzed their attack patterns, and there's a there's an off chance that we could be in danger. And Tarkin is, you know, like, he just completely brushes it off, like, you want me to leave in the moment, in our moment of triumph? You know? Yeah. Like, his his arrogance, like, if he had listened and, you know, he he probably would have survived... This is off topic. You're right about that. Um, and I definitely want to look into this a little bit more. But it looks like Star Wars A New Hope is the highest grossing Star Wars film uh, in the U.S. box office at $1.6 billion. Hmm. Followed closely by A Force Awakens, The Force Awakens, at uh, nine hundred and sixty-five point five million. Now, is this adjusted for inflation, or is this the actual? I think this is just all time. Okay. But a billion sounds like a lot, so I don't know. Did a New Hope just have a bunch more releases? Well, okay. I would so, say this is total. I don't know how many, or how, if they released it multiple times, but. I do know back then, like, they might have had the technology for VHS tapes, so VHS tapes weren't really a thing. Home video wasn't really a thing. They did re-release movies in theaters more often than they do now. Mm. Well, I did so, look up something trying to trying to find this earlier. Well, not this specifically. I wanted to see where um, A New Hope ranked in its time uh as far as like highest gross in, grossing in the box office but yeah this is saying that uh at 1.6 million so it says adjusted that's the budget so oh unadjusted wait so tell me more i need to know more what are you talking about i need i don't need inflation numbers i need um anyways um, but I wanted to see, uh, 
where A New Hope ranked in nineteen in nineteen seventy seven when it came out, like with and all of the other movies up until that point, you know, like, um, what's what's the highest grossing film now? Is it Avatar or is it still Titanic? It's it's or is it one of the Marvel movies? Um, it's either Avatar or Endgame. I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna look it up. I'm I going think to look it in- up. I think Endgame edged out Avatar because of the re-release that they did. Okay. I could be um, wrong about that, but that's I think that's the case. <clears throat> All right. So this is saying Avatar and then in game and then Avatar Way of the Water and then number 4 is Titanic. Really? Avatar the Way of the Water made that much? <laughs> it says uh 2 billion, 2. Point, will that be 2.3 billion? Mhm. Can I, can I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I still haven't seen Avatar 2. I haven't seen all of Avatar. <laughs> I just... No, like, my beach. Force just, Awakens is uh, number five on this on this chart. So I don't think... I think that, that movie or that thing was adjusted for inflation. Mm-hmm. But still, like... Yeah, I still wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, I'm still not surprised that, you know, adjusting for inflation, A New Hope has made more. It's the highest. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to see if it's on this list. Because, um, let's see, they had that, mo- that one, they had um, Rise of Skywalker at 36, uh, Last Jedi 18. And I saw a Phantom Menace somewhere. Uh, um, Phantom Menace at 46. I'm trying to see. But yeah, I mean, like, yeah, episode 3 at 82. I don't know how long this list is. Because it's a woo in 100. So episode 4, New Hope, is at. A hundred and eleven. As of all time. Uh, with wow. It has grossed... Um, seven million... Seven hundred and seventy-five million. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, the thing about this, like... Yes, that's... You know... It's kind of far down there. But think about this. Think about all of the movies that have been made of all time. There have been mm-hmm. a bunch of movies made, and so be, you know, being you know, being in the top you know 150 mm-hmm. highest-grossing movies of all time is still an accomplishment. Like, you know, yes, it's not it's not the flashy numbers like you know in top ten or top five or something, but still, it's still. A lot. But this is also a movie from 1977. Exactly. And, and it probably was, and I think it was uh, one of the, in the 70s and 80s, I think it was one of the highest grossing movies. That's what I'm looking at right now, and I think I finally found it, because I looked up highest grossing films in 1977, well, that would be the highest grossing film in 1977, but it does look like Star Wars was at least one of them. Now, when did Raiders come out? Because I know that they were making Raiders, he was making Raiders around the same time as he was... Um, A New Hope. Uh, Or at least writing some of it. I know we mentioned this when we did that podcast episode. I don't remember what we had found out. Well, give me a second and I'll look it up. But um, right here, the number one and number two movies um, as of 1977 uh, was Episode 4, A New Hope, and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Hmm. 81. Raiders so, was 81. 81? Yep. Alright. The 
let's see this box office charts in 19 or not 1890 that's not right what 1990 <laughs> oh <laughs> would that be box office of plays you know what? I didn't look long enough, but there were some pictures. Because, <laughs> uh... When was the first motion picture? Cause... Mm... Not entirely sure. Alright, why can I not find... I can't find it. This sucks. Okay, that's not exactly what I want. Anyways. I should do I, movie. I am unable to find what I want on the internet. You know, it just it just doesn't work for me. I mean, it does, but I just can't find it. I need to find... Because obviously I understand that it was the biggest movie at that time. I want to know... Like, before Titanic, because I think Titanic was one of the first top highest grossing films at the time. Before Titanic came out, what were the top dogs? Was Star Wars and Indiana Jones all up there? Um, I think they were, because remember, remember we did talk about that. We would pulled up a list when we were talking about Indiana Jones, and most of the top movies in the 80s were uh, George Lucas or Steven Spielberg movies. Well, yes, but I want to find that list because I don't remember. Well, I don't think I pulled it up, but I would like to see it. Um, I think the list I had found was on Wikipedia. What did you look up? Um, Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, see if you can find it and uh, let me know, because I'd like to actually see this for, like, you know, see what it was. Because um, I do know, like, around the time that Raiders came out, that Raiders was amongst other Lucas and Spielberg uh, movies. And so I, I kind of am just curious what, where, where they all ranked, you know? I mean, it said there that... Um, all time that they made seven seven hundred and seventy five million. Okay, you know, so which is really good for a movie of that old. age. That's not what I want. Huh. Well, here's something that's interesting. This is from uh, Screen Rants. Um, <laughs> this is not what I'm looking for, but the highest grossing films of... Um, so this is backwards, but it doesn't really matter because I can just flip it. So it looks like... A New Hope is top 10 um, highest grossing films for uh, 20th Century Fox. Huh. Interesting. It looks like I'm being a little glitchy. Did that get all so, heard? No, I heard it all here. Um, so I found... Okay, so this is of the 80s. So this is... I think this is just movies that came out in the 80s, actually. But, um... Let me see if I can find the 70s list. But in, in this list, uh, Return of the Jedi is ranked number 9. 
But I'm saying fine. Okay. Let me go to the 70s. Okay, so yes. What is of the, in the 70s, ahead. Star Wars was the highest grossing movie that came out in the 70s. Okay. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, needless to say, despite the debacle that we just had trying to look up all that information, um, Star Wars has been a very influential on pop, cult, pop culture. And, you know, it's... The world would not be the same without it. I can say that. Mm-mm. Well, that all nice. being said, do you have much more to add to well, this? Like I said, we, like I said, we did kind of, we did brush the topic of uh, Tarkin, which, again, it honestly, really isn't that much. Like, I don't really have that much to really say about Tarkin. To say about him. And yeah. we didn't talk. We didn't talk about Vader, but Vader doesn't really have much character That's... development at all in this movie either. Um, I feel like yeah. there's more to talk about with Vader once we get to Return of the Jedi. Um, mm-hmm. Ooh, I do have some little tidbits that I could add to the end of this. Okay, go um, ahead. So, apparently James Earl Jones, the iconic voice of Vader, was not the first choice. So Vader would have sounded a lot different. If he was played by, let's see, Orson Welles, he was considered very strongly. Hmm. Uh, Lucas ultimately decided against that because he thought his voice was a little bit too recognizable. Um, and I guess another one, um, Pat Roche, was another one who auditioned. But uh, obviously, James Earl Jones is the iconic voice of... Uh, Star of Star Wars, <laughs> of Vader, and we are happy for that. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Uh, other casting lists, because I have that. I have uh some people who auditioned for Luke and for Han Solo. Uh, for Luke though, um, let's see. I don't. I didn't know who these people were. Uh, William, Cat. Uh, I looked him up. I didn't really know anything he was in, but that was someone who was uh, originally uh, auditioned for the role and had serious consideration. But the kicker was that uh, where's his name? Where's his name? Robert England, England, the the guy who plays Freddy Krueger, mm-hmm. was originally uh, thought to, or they were thinking about having him play uh, Luke Skywalker. But he missed out on playing Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. Because I guess he auditioned for both. Hmm. Now, uh... Um, Han Solo... So, um... You know how when uh, we were talking about uh, Raiders, how I mentioned that um, Harrison Ford was not the first pick for... um, Indiana Jones, and there's, you know, big names like Tom Selleck, uh, who were originally thought yeah. to play the role. There were some big names to play Han Solo originally with this, too. Uh, names like James Kane, uh, Jack Nicholson, Robert De Niro, um, Al Bacconi? Bacono? I, sh- I know I know the name. I just can't pronounce it. Uh, Al, P A C I N O. What's that name? Um, I'd have to look at it. I don't. All right. Anyways, and uh, Burt Ren- Ren- Burt Reynolds, Reynolds. Huh. Uh, Burt and there's Reynolds also is one Kurt that I Russell. Could see. Kurt Russell, I could see. Yeah. Kurt Russell. Uh, Christopher Walken. Uh, Sylvester hmm. Stallone, John Travolta, Chevy Chase, and James Wood were also people who auditioned for the role. And obviously now we have Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford is uh, Han Solo. And as much as I could see some of those actors in the role, 
I do not want anyone other than Harrison Ford playing Han Solo. No. I don't no. think that it really would have worked if it wasn't. No. Um, wasn't okay, for so that. Uh, now obviously the character would have been very different if anyone had else had played him, but of those you mm-hmm. just mentioned, like I said, I think Burt Reynolds is the closest that we would have gotten to a Harrison Ford <clears throat> Han Solo, but Yeah. But that being said, like, you know, you do you do look into it a lot of times like um it is it is interesting to see some of the casting decisions. Like when you watch something you're like, Oh yeah, that's that this is amazing casting and sometimes how like that's not even the first person who stopped for the role. Mm-hmm. It really is cool sometimes to see who could have been. But a lot of times if you're really happy with who you have, you just can't see anyone else in the role. Mm-hmm. Now one thing that you m- I've probably told you this before, but so, the Imperial Spy in Mos Eisley. Mm-hmm. You know, the elephant face guy with the hood. Yeah. So, do you know whose voice they took a sample of to create that sound? I did not. So, this was his... Now, he wasn't originally credited. I don't know if he's credited now. But this is technically his last movie appearance. But that that sound clip that they got they they ran, distorted it. I don't know what all they did to it, but mm-hmm. the original sound clip was a sound clip of John Wayne. Wow. So did not, technically, I might have heard that, but hmm. so technically, this was his last role. Wow. Yeah, because he, he I uh, did not know that. Because John Wayne unfortunately passed away. Two years after this movie came out in 1979. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I, I found that, that out. Uh, and I was like, that's that's. Well, that's interesting. Um, I mean, hey, he uh, he was a Western star, so it only it fits that he uh, you know, is in a space Western. Which I just looked him up here, and you know what? One of the first thing is, um, it says John Wayne Star Wars cameo. <laughs> They're listening, David. They're listening. Uh, <sighs> Go away, Google. We don't need you to. Well, if 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 you want to listen to the podcast once we upload it, that's fine. But. You know, add views. Yeah, that actually would be. We, we, uh, we, that that'd yeah, be that'd helpful. But be... we we, but we don't need you uh, listening in our on our Discord calls. You know that. To be honest, the only, like there 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 really wasn't. I mean, there was, but there really wasn't a whole lot of point for that character. Um. The most I know him from is the Lego Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in fact, on on uh, Wikipedia, that that is his last credited role on Wikipedia. Hmm. Is yeah, I'm seeing it um, here. Um, Yep. Well, I don't know how much more we have to say about this, but I'm sure we can go ahead and move on to what's new with you if we're ready to wrap up a new hope. Yeah, I mean, that's works for me. Do you have any closing statements or and closing thoughts on this? Or? Closing thoughts on this? If you haven't seen the movie and you don't care to see the movie right now and watch it in its entirety... Please go check out our video on YouTube. We do break down all the main story beats in that. And um, support us over there if you're not watching us there now. If you are, 
go watch the video over um somewhere. Mm. But yeah, go watch the video on YouTube and yeah. All right. So you ready to do what's new with you? I can do that. All right. I'm not getting up though. I'm not getting up. Oh, it's fine. What's new? 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 Yeah. Well, now I want to get up. Well, too bad, because what's new with you has started. Ah, oh, man. Dang it. Oh, well. I already, ch I already changed the logo, <laughs> so what's new with you has started. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, okay. I see yeah. how it is. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what's new with me. I watched the entire Jurassic Park series this weekend and the first Jurassic World. Well, aren't you impressed? Yeah, I had a lot of time. For once, for once, it's not normal. So, what what do you think of the Jurassic Park movies? There's a lot of stupid people in it. Well, okay, okay. You don't go watch Jurassic Park to see smart people. You go watch Jurassic Park. To see people getting eaten by dinosaurs. And that was good. I, I thought for the original three movies that the um like the dinosaurs they looked really good. Mm -hmm. The plot of the first one I liked. The second one and the third one was like, okay, you're just making sequels. Jurassic World, I thought as a whole, was a really good movie though. Mm -hmm. I will say okay, so like, plot wise all the... I thought it was good. And less of, stupid people. Not entirely, but less. Of all six movies, the three Jurassic Park and three Jurassic World movies, I feel like they focused more heavily on storyline and the Jurassic World movies. Um, mm -hmm. and it obviously they could like do a, that. And obviously they could do a lot more because they had C, the better CGI. Obviously they had CG dinosaurs in Jurassic mm -hmm. Park 2. But they didn't, you know, like the the raptors and stuff were practical effects. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I will say I really liked Jurassic Park, and I really liked Jurassic World. Those are the best two. The um, uh, what's it called? Um, Hidden Kingdom or something like that. What's it called? Jurassic Park three, the second one, or two? Yeah, Jurassic no. Park two. Yeah. Yeah, whatever the second one's called. Um, that one was okay, because I was like, okay, they're introducing a new island. Okay, in all honesty, all three of the original Jurassic Park movies weren't that, like, story-wise, weren't bad. Like, the reasons they go to the island, I didn't hate the reasoning. It wasn't just like, we're making another movie. It's obvious we're making another movie. They had decent storylines. Like, mm -hmm. the first time, the second one, they go to the island because they want research. Well, the main guy uh, who started the park wants research done on these animals over here. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, Jeff Goldblum mm -hmm. says no. And then yeah, Malcolm. he finds out that his girlfriend's over there and says, oh, now I'm going because I got to rescue her. So mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense. Second, uh, third movie, why do they go to the island? Because uh, Dr. What's his name? Dr. Grant or whatever? Right? Yep. No? Anyways. Dr. He Alan gets Grant. Tricked into going to, so he gets tricked into going to the island. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they're fun action movies where everyone dies and gets eaten and gobbled up and, you know, yummy, yummy, yummy. Mm -hmm. I don't have to think about the science of it. Or the fact that I don't think dinosaurs really care that much to chase down humans. Doesn't really matter, because all I want to see is, a, you know, jaws on land. It's, it's, especially, especially the um, the bad guys in the movie, like the bad people mm -hmm. in the movies, because, like, you know, it's, not, it's nice to see them get, get eaten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, it is. Like, um, I, I, re- I watched through those not too long ago, and I'm just like, can they just go ahead and eat this guy already? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes even it's like, it's like they're not even a bad guy. They're just stupid. And you're mm-hmm. like, can someone just shut? I mean, it's like, you know, uh, in the in the first couple movies, or the first two movies, I guess, you know, Jeff Goldblum's just like, why does nobody listen to me? And then, you know, it's it's usually, like, not that the other character, the other, like, Dr. Grant, his character's smart and says this is not a good idea. But, um, you know, in the third movie, he's like, is nobody listening to me here? This is stupid. <laughs> You know, it's mm-hmm. like the main characters in all the movies are like, don't do this. I mean, even Chris mm. Pratt's character in uh, Jurassic World is like, are y'all stupid? Oh, and Chris yes, Pratt's character, yes. like, Chris Pratt's character is like, is right about everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, I really enjoyed him in the in that. Like, I think he did a really good job. And I think it's one thing is like, so Chris Pratt is traditionally seen as a comedic character. But this movie doesn't really have that much comedy in it, you know? Mm-mm. Like, he did Parks and Rec, and he did Guardians, which Guardians is action, but it's comedic. This, he's strictly an action hero in this in this movie, for the most part. I mean, obviously, there's maybe a quip here and there, but it's mostly just strict action. Yeah. And he's the, and he's the smart guy, too. Like, like you said, he's always right. Whatever, like, what he says is going to happen ends up happening because he's smart. In this movie, mm-hmm. which isn't always the case for well, his characters, he's he's not like. I mean, yes, he's smart, but he's not really like. Like that, like you know, like oh man, this guy's a genius. He's just he just got common sense. Well, yeah, he's got common <laughs> sense, and he's he's like been in his he's been in that field long enough to know, mm-hmm. you know, how animals react, how the dinosaurs, you know, react mm-hmm. and stuff. So. Um, but, uh, no, I thought they were good, and, you know, um, I plan on eventually seeing the, uh, last two, Mm -hmm. when I can get around to it. I had a lot of time this weekend to watch movies, and I watched those, and now I'm getting back to normal life, and, you know, it might be a minute. I uh, I do want to talk, I do want to talk. We are going on vacation in the, uh, the end of August, so I might get around to watching it. I do want to talk about the names of the movies, no. the, the first three, oh. because okay, so I say the dinosaurs, and I was about to be like, I have no idea what they were called. No, no. The names, the names of the first three movies. So yeah. we have Jurassic Park is the first one, and the third one mm-hmm. is Jurassic Park Three. Makes sense. Now I skipped the second one for a reason, because the second one is called The Lost World, subtitled Jurassic Park. But, like, that... It's not even Jurassic Park, The Lost World. It's The Lost World, no. Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's it's The Lost yeah. World, Jurassic That's Park. Funny. That makes, like... Okay, it's not as bad as the Fast and Furious franchise, or Rambo, but it's still pretty bad. <laughs> like... Uh... <laughs> like... Fast and the Furious. The, too fast, too furious. Both fast and the furious. I, this. Like, they, I don't they think you can get much have, worse than that. Like, could you not have just done Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 2, and Jurassic Park 3? Would have made a lot more sense. I mean, you could even do Jurassic Park 2, The Lost World, mm-hmm. and it would still be fine. Just maybe come up with a name for the last one. Jurassic Park 3, uh... Trick to Dino Land. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> plane crash. Um, but yeah, they, they could have made it more consistent. But small like business said, owner. But like I said, it's it's not even that bad that there's a different, like you know, they have a name for the second one. It's not just Jurassic Park Two. Mm-hmm. It's not even that bad. But why is Jurassic Park the subtitle? Yeah. That doesn't really make sense. It should be written Jurassic Park 2, or just Jurassic Park, <laughs> the lost, you know. Like, okay, the Jurassic yeah. World movies, the first one's Jurassic World, then the next one is the Jura- is Jurassic World 
uh, Fallen Kingdom, then Jurassic World Dominion. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. got the name of the series and then the subtitle for, for 2 and 3. But they yeah. could have done that with the first one. But why is the name of the series the subtitle for the mo- <laughs> Well, also, watching back... Or not watching back, this is the first time I watched it. But watching the movies, I did notice, along with the titles being a little bit skewed like that and being a little weird, the movies don't, like, they use the same characters... But it really feels like they made a movie, it was a hit, and they're like, oh, we need to make another one. So they did. And that one went over well, well enough. And they're like, oh, we need to make another one. And they did. But they didn't really have a full, they didn't really connect them as well as they could have. They all kind of seemed like scrammed together to make. Whereas mm-hmm. like when I was watching Jurassic World, it linked the other ones together. It, it just felt like the story was told a lot better. And you said like they, they focused a little more on storytelling. But that's kind of that was kind of obvious. Like in Jurassic World, like it felt it felt more linked to the original three than the original three felt linked together. In the yep. way I was watching it. Yeah. Now I will say the third Jurassic Park or Jurassic World movie. Or the sixth mm-hmm. one in the series. I know you haven't seen it yet. But it is kind of weird because it feels okay, it feels like it's a sequel to the second Jurassic World movie. And like, you know, it's kinda of like you can tell it's in the same universe, it brings back all the old characters, but I don't feel like it mm-hmm. ties everything together that well. Well, I know you were uh and I don't know because I know Katie was getting us to watch these these movies. Mm-hmm. And um I don't remember. Has she seen the newest one, or is yeah just yeah. had you seen? So she's seen it. She yeah. was talking about either you talking about it or her talk her having seen it. But she said it was mostly like it was a lot of fan service as opposed yes. to actually really yeah. being a story. Which you know when you try and do that in a movie, it really does. It's hard to do that right. I mean, you know, from. And a lot of times, like they're really light, like you, they're really good movies. But if you actually stop and think about it, you're like, "Wait a minute, that was not Spider-Man: um, No Way Home." Is a prime example. Was it a good movie? Yes. Did it make any sense? Absolutely not. You mm-hmm. know, all fan service. So it's like, you know, obviously, I haven't, I haven't seen the newest Jurassic World, which that came out like what a year or two ago or something like that. Yeah, I think it's it's been I think it's been since COVID. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think it's okay. been since COVID. Okay, so it's it's more reason. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the second one. I'll get around to it eventually. Um, but uh, you know, I guess it does kind of fit into that time where a lot of movies were just fan service. But it's like you can do that and still make a good movie. Mm-hmm. They just don't care to make a good movie, you know. It's, I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that some of the movies that are coming out in Hollywood over the next couple of years, maybe even with this writer's strike and the actor strike, you know, going on, maybe some of that will halt Hollywood, and then some good movies can come out after that. You know, I don't really maybe. know. I just hope. I just hope that. You know, I, I just like good content. So, I don't know why we post these uh, podcasts, but, you know, I like good content, so. Nobody else has to. You can listen to this. Maybe someone else will enjoy this, but, you know. That's true, that's true. We try our best. That's sad. Wait, we do? Anyway, no, I'm kidding. (laughs) You haven't been trying your best? (laughs) Oh, man. No wonder we suck. No, I think that's just because your face. Oh, so it was a bad idea to start doing video recording. <laughs> yeah, you know, I should have thought of that in advance, but yeah, your tomato-looking face. I know it. I don't know what happened because I don't think it was looking like this to begin with. I don't know if the lighting changed, or I don't also, know. Also, my face is just getting red. I need to figure out a way to get my light to be more uh, warm because my I look very pale. 
<laughs> right now. I know if you you and me mashed together, we'd probably be just fine. But uh, yeah, because yeah. right now you look very I'm... red and I look very pale. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get my face in the light here so I can get a little more pale. But uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, all right, David, what's new with you? Because that's what's new with me. But I need to know what's new with you now. Nothing. That's so interesting. Well, 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 I don't know. I have been playing more uh, Fallen Order. See, it's it's hard because I'm playing Fallen Order and Fallout. <laughs> so yeah. when I'm just briefly thinking through the two, I'm like, what am I playing? I'm playing Fall... So, Fallen Order. Mm. I am on... T- which planet am I on? Um, I don't know. Well, name Are off the on... planets. Uh, I know I'm not on Dathomir. Okay, well, you first go That's to... That's the one that... The, the first planet you're on after the tutorial is Bagano. Then you go to Zepho. That's the I've first, like, Zepho. actual world. Then you go to... I've been to Zepho. Kashyyyk, I think. That's where I'm at. Kash... Is that really Kashyyyk? Yeah, I guess it's Kashyyyk. I'm on the. I know I'm with the Wookiees, so that's why I'm. If Sagarera's over there, yeah, I'm with him. Yeah. Or I've okay. actually gotten past all that. I think. I'm trying to think now. I think I'm. Uh, what was I doing last? Oh yeah. So you're supposed to find a way to the roof. And I found my way to the roof, and I think that was about the last place that I got. But I finally took care of that walker that was such a pain to deal with i'm not Mm. better at it but i am able to get by i'm starting i think i am starting to i think i am starting to pick up a little bit more on the uh the gameplay of it like i'm having a little bit easier time taking out uh troopers than i've Mm. had in the past but i'm also expanding my skill tree a lot more than i was so mm-hmm. I think all of those things are kind of adding together, but um, you know, oh, you, you haven't uh, even I'm still dying. The, like I, you haven't even gotten yeah. some of the best boss I fights yet. The, yeah, I don't need to. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I would like to finish this game. Um, I may not by the time we talk about it, and but you know, um. This one, this one is more of a deal. Like, if I if I had to finish a one game before we talk about it, it I'd rather wa- uh, this one. Not because I don't like Fallout. It's just that one, I already kind of know the spoilers to Fallout, and two, even if I didn't, I wouldn't really care if they were spoiled for me. So, mm. but for all I know, you could be lying to me. So you know. There is that possibility. I haven't looked into it, so you could just be lying to me about it all, which I'm okay with. I'll look into it when I need to, but. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I have been playing through more like of, uh, I have been playing through more Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of no, like. The second it's, one, it's like, the... you said the second one was the prequel, right? Yeah, the second one takes place first. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you and thought I'm... Jurassic Park was confusing. And the the um, well, okay. So the the first game takes place in like nineteen eleven or something. And you know it's a it's a western game, so there wasn't really much like if they go further in time they're not really gonna have much of a wild west left so you know how much wild west was there in 1911 i mean i know i know the 20th century has really changed you know uh, like from 1900 to 2000 a lot happened Mm-hmm. But, I think generally, you know, how much what we how think much of, Wild West was there? There was some. I don't. 
I don't know how much necessarily there was, because I think generally when we think of, like, you know, the Wild West, generally it's like, you know, 1870s, 1880s. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got, like, the California Gold Rush before that. Before then, you know, that's when people started moving out west and stuff. You get all these, you know, plantations mm-hmm. and stuff. Because, uh, you know, California and Texas started getting settled earlier, but a lot of the western, you know, western part of this, the country wasn't really that settled back then, you know. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, to a point, it still isn't. It's still pretty sparsely, sparsely right. populated compared to the east. That's because a lot of it's just like you got some desert out there. It's kind of hard to do a lot with it. I mean, they can. Yeah. They just haven't taken the time to do anything with that yet. Mm. So, and that's another thing too. Uh, even now, to a to a point now, population centers are centered around water. Mm-hmm. That's just the that's just the way it is, you know. Like, yes, now yeah. we do have more, you know more uh, technology. We can bring in drinking water and stuff to areas, mm-hmm. but it's a lot. It's a lot cheaper if the drinking water is already there. Yeah, yeah, and and not having to you know run stuff longer distances or transport mm-hmm. stuff. And yeah, a bunch of bunch of reasons water sources are kind of important just a little bit yeah yeah but don't worry eventually they'll start making artificial water you know like they're making all the artificial food they make artificial water i i don't i don't know how that would work but i'll take your word for it hey let i mean hey in, in all honesty as much as like it is kind of jokey like in all honesty it probably isn't something that hasn't been considered like artificial water because they are making like artificial foods and like stuff like that you know so there might be a thing where it's like hey let's figure out a way to you know basically just take all these things the components and put them together to make water i mean okay at that at that point you would still be water but it would be i mean yeah i guess artificial artificially made water that that's kind of what i'm getting i mean they're not gonna like they're not gonna make something that's different than water i mean it's yeah. all gonna have let's see uh purified where's where's the list we got it's all it's all gonna have purified water calcium chloride sodium that's a big word all the good stuff In purified or, water. Or it's just H2O. No. That's impossible. Can't make money off of that. Although, <laughs> although actually, you don't really want to drink pure water. You want it to have minerals dissolved into it. Because if you do, like distilled water, which is as mm-hmm. pure a water form as we can get. Well... Avail- like, available water source that we can get. You, you don't really want to mm-hmm. drink too much distilled water because it it takes a lot of minerals out of your body. My favorite kind of water is chocolate water. You who? <laughs> no. The stuff we get in the creek outside. <laughs> Take a straw <laughs> straight from nature the way it was intended. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mud pies and chocolate water. I, I, I like how I like how this has come full circle because now we're back to talking about water and you <laughs> like we were at the beginning <laughs> of this episode. Uh, does that mean that we should be uh, ending it soon? Probably. <laughs> We've already come full circle, so we might as well end it here. <laughs> there you go. That's true. That's true. Well, as long as you don't have anything else to add, I think I'm good for this week. It all it all goes back to Yoohoo. Remember that, everyone. Everything goes back to Yoohoo. Yoohoo. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Not a sponsor. 
probably never a sponsor, but probably. Yeah. Hey, if you don't like you, if if you don't like you, who, that's that's uh that's your own preference. But I like it here. All right. Well, I don't have I don't have anything else. So yeah, I figure we can head to an outro. All right. Cue the outro music. Well, Explorers, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Let us know what you thought in the comments down below, or you can DM us on Instagram at DownTheRapidTrailYT. Be sure to check us out on YouTube, and also be sure to join us next week on the Trailcast.